it was through a friend. I was in such a different place in my life. Um, I was also looking for a, an escape as well because um, there was a lot of trouble at home. And um, yeah, I was sort of looking for an escape and he felt safe to me to to go with that route. Um, and yeah, and so that's how we sort of ended up connecting. I now know that it's a trauma bond. Childhood, my father was also physically abusive as well. So I sort of saw a link there and I just, that felt safe to me to go with that route. Um, my parents had also kicked me out at the time as well. So I was sort of like, it was either go to like a hostel where there was loads of drug addicts there and things, or it was go with him. So I chose, I chose that route because that felt the most safest in that moment. too sure to be on it um emotional stability like just somewhere I could just be myself I guess and feel free like I thought I was free in myself because we ended up going to house together and things and I I, I did feel like I had some kind of independence because I'd broke free from one situation and then ended up in in another situation um but then obviously the cracks started to show then as time went on <laughs> So it was actually once we got a house together, he started to like threaten me and things. And I just knew like, this isn't gonna end well, but obviously like I had nowhere to go. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna ride it out. Like, well, it'll be fine. Um, and then there was this one time where he had um, threatened to hit me if I was in the house when he came home. So I just packed my stuff and I went to a friend's house. And then again, he loved on me and, you know, said everything will be fine and things. So I went back and I just, I just knew it wasn't gonna end well. Um, basically, yeah, and then that sort of led up to the assault then. He'd locked me out the house, um, he'd slashed my belongings at my laptop and things like that, so um, sort of cut me off from friends, um, and I'd, obviously I'd moved away from my family as well, so I was sort of in a situation where I felt like I could depend on him, um, but I was in a very unsafe situation, yeah. It didn't feel good. It didn't feel good because I didn't feel like I had any support. Lucky enough, I did have one friend. During the relationship, he'd obviously like drummed into me, you can't phone the police or things like this. So I knew I couldn't phone the police straight away. Like that would have made me even more unsafe. So I waited till the next morning when he went to work and I phoned my friend and she just came and picked me up straight away. Like she said, um, I'll just come and get you. Um, so I just packed all of my things and I got in the car with her and I went to his. So during this time, my friend had suggested that I made a statement. I was really against it because of how scared I was, obviously. But in hindsight, it's probably the best thing that I did was to make a statement. So then they had um, out for his arrest um, and they did actually arrest him. But then they re released him on bail. Honestly, I feared that he was going to kill me um, because he had like a really violent history and I was just sort of learning more about his history as I was with my friend because she had known of him. So she was like telling me more things and obviously it was spiraling at that point. Um, I hadn't told him where I was or anything, but he was stalking me and he actually eventually ended up finding out where I was um, whilst he was on bail. So they'd released him from the assault then he was on bail and um, yeah, he found out where I was and he had used then coercive control to get me to go with him in the car. And um, he took me for three days. Um, during that time, it just started to get um, darker and darker, the things he was saying to me. Um, he made me believe like I was on the run with him. Um, there was sexual assault during that time as well. He was also on drugs as well, so he was very unpredictable. And it was pure survival mode at that point in time. I'd had my phone, but I'd actually he'd taken me to a hotel. And um, I'd hidden my phone under the bed because I thought if he knows, like, I've got my phone or that there's any chance of me um, reaching out to someone, then at least I've got my phone under the bed. 
and he had shown me on my foot on his phone sorry at this point that um the police had now put a missing person post up for me and for him so i was a missing person for three days and um that was another thing that was really difficult to deal with with the fact that it was so public um so obviously now my face was being shared all over social media um every social media platform you can think of my face was there and it just felt like a dream like it didn't feel real like that was my life like it's just so surreal to think that I was in that situation it was all the mind games as well during that time it was like you know we can go I can take you to the police station and we can tell the police to drop the charges like he really was trying to get me to drop the charges from the assault so that he didn't have to go to prison and obviously I was doing everything I could to make it look like I was on his side you know so that I wasn't putting myself in any unsafety um I really didn't know if I was going to make it out of that situation alive to be quite honest but yeah the police found us they tracked us down um and I'm just so thankful I'm really thankful that the police did find us They did. They absolutely did fail me because not only did they do that, they also left me where they found me. So they arrested him. They took him away. There was no car to take me home. It was actually his mum and his friend that come and picked me up from that situation. So there was no police there to help me get home. I was literally left. So I was a missing person. They found me and they left me where they found me, which just blows my mind to this day that that even happened. So they did do risk assessments and every time they said because of the um, assault and because strangulation was the first assault that I was really high risk. Um, and they put um, like, what's it called, security things up on the house and on my friend's house as well. Um, but I didn't feel like there was much emotional support for me. Um, it was sort of just like, you're high risk, we're going to do this, and that's that. And it sort of made me actually have more fear because there was all these alarms there and, and all of this. No, no. He, he was released on bail again, um, and the police officer... Um, spoke to her mum on the phone and said that you don't need to worry you're still locked up and my intuition was screaming at this point saying that he's not being locked up um, but obviously I was in such a state mentally that you know I just needed to just kind of look after myself the next day we had another phone call from a different police officer to say that he had actually been released the previous night and they are not sure why we were told that he um was uh, locked up. So he wasn't allowed to contact me um, at all through any means of contact or a third party mm. at all. Um, but obviously he broke every single one of them every single time. Um, he made numerous fake accounts contact me, continued to stalk me then after the kidnapping as well. It was just fake account after fake account. Um, I did report them every time, but it was like nothing was being really put in place to, um, for my safety. So yeah, I did feel like I was really let down by the police system. No, um, so he actually went on the run. So they couldn't find him, they couldn't track him down. I did take him to court for the strangulation, which I then got a restraining order put in place. Um, so there was that. Um, but the kidnapping rape, I never made a statement because I was so scared. I was literally petrified um, for myself, for my family. Um, I just didn't feel like I had enough support around me to make a statement and go through that whole court process again. Um, so yeah. It was 
horrible. It was honestly the worst experience of my life. I went into psychosis. Um, so I was hallucinating. Um, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. Um, I couldn't leave the house by myself. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. I was a complete wreck, to be quite honest with you. Um, yeah, it's taken me a while to really rebuild myself and rebuild my life. It's been, it's been really beautiful, but it's also been really chaotic as well. Um, you've got the highs with the lows. Um, it's still a journey now. It's still a process. Um, but yeah, it's like the more I discover about myself, um, the more I learn about myself, it's like that next layer and that next layer and that next layer and where does that come from? And I wouldn't wish it on anyone.